Howdy folks, Timber Drifter here. My co-host Caillou's in the woods there somewhere rooting around. Caillou the dog. Some house sitting, taking care of some horses and the dog. And uh, I realized I hadn't heard the horses in a while. And it's a bright sunny day and it's been cold out so it's kind of unusual that they wouldn't be out in the pasture here. So I figured I'd better come check the barn, make sure they're in there. And see the fence doesn't appear to be compromised anywhere, but right before I turned the camera on, I heard him, heard uh, basically a call and reply in there. Now I see him moving around. There they go. So they're checking me out. What's he doing on that side of the fence? I usually go on the other side of the fence. <laughs> yep. So now that I know where they are, I'll go ahead and go for a walk here. It's a lovely horse trail. Big tall trees, a whole line of them. I'm gonna go back behind there. Hang on. He's really checking me out. Got the old bad attitude tamp here. I'm kind of known for flipping people off. I don't necessarily mean anything by it. It's the habit I picked up in childhood and have kept. So don't be offended by the tamper being pointed at you. This really is a uh, quite a beautiful place here. Trees are planted in lines like a like a tree plantation, but that's all right. Still a little snow in the woods, not much. It's just a little bit too warm to be wearing this coat. Not warm enough to take it off. Lovely spring day in the North Woods. So since I've been here house sitting, I'm catching up on YouTube videos and of course I always end up watching a lot of documentaries and personal interviews. I like it when somebody's traveling around and they stop and interview people, especially when they're not necessarily from that area. So I like that kind of stuff and I've been watching some PBS documentaries on, uh, they got Apple TV here kind of a novel thing to me. Shows up as tiles on the screen rather than channels and you go through and pick out which ones you might want to look at and open that up. And each individual show is on there. No commercials, no nothing. Watch anything you want. Pause it anytime you want. That works a lot better for me. I hate commercials. I haven't had a TV since, I think, probably 2004 at the latest, so not a regular part of my viewing. To be honest with you, the last few times, well, probably in the last six months, eight months, every time I go into a bar that has a big flat screen with news on or a little cafe in the town I live in that's got one, Kind of feel like uh, those news programs are doing some pretty good brainwashing. What I mean by that is all the all the flashing images. 
and the images don't necessarily line up with the words they're saying. So I'm not, all, not being all paranoid, freaked out here, just saying I can't really handle looking at it. My mind feels weird afterward. <laughs> just not used to all those flashing images and all those hairdos smiling and grinning while delivering terrible news. And Man, they have the stupidest people on as experts and commentators. Several times recently I've seen somebody supposedly knows what they're talking about. It's not just being completely off, and it's not just a matter of opinion, it's a matter of this is how things are, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to delve into that. Everybody's kind of tired of the news cycle from what I gather. The country's divided enough. Friends are divided enough without going around trying to piss everyone off. Isn't that pretty? A little snow-covered trail. It's really nice, really beautiful day. Totally still, no wind. But it is in my nature to uh, stir the pot and piss people off. I just don't typically do that on here. I don't think I do anyway. A lot of the people that aren't good friends of mine, but people that know me, don't know where I stand on any particular issue. Well, there's a few. But I tend to argue things from both sides, and if somebody's real hot on one topic and I can tell they don't know what they're talking about or they're just mimicking something they heard on the news or some radio broadcaster say. I like to argue equally from the other side and get them all hot and bothered and ask them tough questions and they end up not knowing what side I'm on. I might be on their side. But I just ask that people think about things, you know, question things. Don't just accept what you hear. Because it sounds good. Basically, I just ask that people don't bullshit themselves. And while they're not bullshitting themselves, don't bullshit me either. <laughs> well, let's talk about pipes. Get some good light here. So this one I'm smoking, the K. Woody Saxon. And I've admired this pipe since I was a kid. I think I've talked about it in another video. But I recently did some work on it and made it smokable. Uh, so yeah, I first saw this pipe when I was a kid, probably like five or six, maybe a little older, in the Rexall Drug Store on the... I think it was, if I remember right, it was kind of a, sort of a pyramid spinning display for K. Woody pipes. And uh, this one's a sandblast. Let me try to find some good light here so I can show it off a little bit. Sandblast. Pretty nice one. I've always admired it. But the bowl is, or the tobacco chamber is kind of wide and short, so it's not that great of a smoker unless you're going to sit down and concentrate. And the bit was uh, very thick. That's not going to focus on that, but you get the idea. It was very thick, uncomfortable, and it was bent too much. Uh, the way that it was set up when I had it in my mouth, instead of being like this, it was like that. And it was bent right about here. So that just, that never worked for me. I admired the way it looked, aesthetically, but it didn't work for me as far as practical smoking. So I put it in some warm water and straightened it out, polished the stem with paper towels and fine sandpaper, reworked the uh, the bit with the file, and I re-drilled the pipe, 5.30 seconds. It smokes a lot better, it's still not perfect. But, <clears throat> very little is. I don't even know if I could point out one thing that is. Except for maybe something nature created. That ice right there. 
That ice is perfect. <laughs> it did its job. It's melting, it's hanging on. The grip of winter is loosening. It's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna go walk on it. I mean, look at that. Perfectly copied all those shapes of those leaves. Truly lovely. Look where that dog got off to. I don't even hear him. Probably at some neighbor's house bagging treats. He's like that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, smoking some uh, Cyprian Star. That uh, pipes and kayaks sent to me. That is a damn fine blend. I just heard the dog. He's around. Damn fine blend. We'll go right down to the bottom. Nice little third growth woodland here. More oaks than I see over by where I live. Young oaks. This size here, these are oaks. So, not a good, not a good trail pipe. It's very light. It's comfortable to clench now, but because of that shallow bowl when I'm walking, sometimes embers will fall right out of it. Good rocking chair pipe. That's bog out there, but we've had a lot of a lot of water and a lot of snow, so normally that would be kind of reeds and sphagnum moss and maybe a little standing water. But right now it's all just melting ice. So it doesn't normally have that much water in it. Or not that I've seen. The only other thing on my mind right now is, uh, I think it's been over a month ago now, I was listening to a program called On Point, hosted by Tom Ashbrook. Not a whole lot of those kind of programs I listen to, but I enjoy his program. I like when somebody will call in and claim that the that the media is all bought and paid for and they'd only report on what they're told to report on and he gets all in, oh, nobody's paying me to tell me what to say. And I enjoy that. I don't disagree with the people calling in either. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, he has good guests and good programs, oftentimes. It's rare that maybe one in 15 of his programs is perhaps a little boring. See if I can find a branch to hang this on. Maybe right here. Maybe, maybe this one right here. Oh, 
Almost. Just hang in there a minute. I'll get it. Alright. That'll work. Yeah, so I heard a guest on his program. A musician. This one's out, so I'm going to switch to the this one here. The old uh, butts choking. Uh, Canadian. He had a guest on his program. Goes by the name of uh, Lady Lamb. Her given name is Allie Spaltro, I believe, in Maine. I'd never heard of her. And I likely wouldn't have ever listened to her music had I not heard her interview and a few songs she played on Tom Ashbrook's show. It's not my kind of music, typically. I listen to a lot of different things, but... Typically just not that kind of music. And, uh... But I heard what she said, and... Two of the songs she played tickled my brain. You know, it's not a whole lot of music that does that. Some of the, some of those old blues music, some of the songs that the uh, the Doors played, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Neil Young's probably the the artist that his music tickles my brain more than any of them. And when I say that, it's kind of a feeling sort of back here, and. Uh, Give me the chills a little bit. One of her songs did that. Another one came pretty close to it. And I thought, I'm going to look her up and see what kind of music she's got. When I initially listened to those first two songs I listened to on the radio, which, if I remember right, is the song Crane Your Neck and uh, Spat Out Spit. Not a very appetizing title, but it gets the point across. And I thought, yeah, those are just as good as I remember them being on the show. So I started listening to some of her other music. Kind of figured out where she was coming from, and I didn't look her up. I just going through YouTube looking at the different songs. Well, there's something that happens to me when I find a, an artist or, or something I appreciate. It doesn't necessarily need to be music. Definitely could be writers or, or painters. And it's what I call a calibration period, where my mind has to calibrate to what I'm looking at, feeling, or seeing, hearing, you know. I don't necessarily get it right away, but I know if there's something there... You know, and it makes me look deeper. Anything to me that seems like it's real and true uh, and comes from the heart. Uh, I'll take a closer look. And there was a calibration period there with Lady Lamb, but I, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm a fan now. She has a, a lot of poetry in her music, and, and the music itself at times is kind of rough. I get it. I like it. The calibration period thing, though. The best example of that. Almost 20 minutes. Well, I'll try to wrap this up quick. <laughs> Long video. I have a friend that I met years ago. He and his wife. That was a painter. And his paintings, although I recognize the talent in them, they didn't do anything for me right away. It's just, uh, the first painting style that I really identified with was Impressionism, and I've always admired that since then. I, and uh, I have some prints and things that I'll, I display. And his work is very... I can't think of the right terms for it right now, but it's very layered. It's oil paints, and they're very layered. It's textured, and you kind of got to step back from it to see the picture of it. And it's not, I mean, he's painting actual things, typically animals.
but it just didn't do much for me. I recognized the talent there, but the style didn't do anything for me. And then one day I was, I was house-sitting for them, and he had his studio in the second-floor apartment of a garage, and it was a big, wide-open room, painted white with some windows and sliding glass doors, plenty of light coming in. And he had his paintings all the way around, and then some on the walls, and then some that he was working on, on easels. And he was an occasional cigar smoker, so I figured I could get away with smoking a cigar in his studio. So I sat in a chair just about right in the middle of the studio for about four hours and puffed on this really great cigar. I don't remember what it was, but as the sun moved across the sky and the light moved around the room, it lit up his paintings. And all of those paintings, I realized that not only does the texture provide shadow and depth to the painting, but the paintings themselves have their own light. Everything I've seen him paint has light in the painting represented, and then when other light shines on it and moves across it, if you look at him long enough, man, that just lit me up. And I got it. Now I'm a fan. <laughs> His name's Bradley Davis, by the way. At that time in his studio, he had some pet portraits, but mostly he had wildlife portraits. And he also had some, uh, I guess that I can't remember the right terms, but just lines and squares, all different colors, and just texture built up. And yeah, watch sitting in that room and watching that light move across the room and across those paintings really, really lit me up. Just like the music, uh, the poetry and, and uh, vocals and guitar and uh, Lady Lamb's music. Not my normal style, but I'll take it. I like it. Y'all take care.